Hello, this is Hans van der Kwast, Senior Lecturer at IHG Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful visualization of the flow accumulation using Arialot. But first we need to do some pre-processing steps and we use QGIS and PC Raster. In another video, I've explained how to enable the PC Raster scripts in QGIS on Conda. So you can check it on this GitHub page. The link will also be in the description of this video. So I can uh, activate the environment. And then run QGIS from Conda. And then QGIS starts. And uh, I've added uh, four tiles from the SRTM, Shuttle Radar Topography Mission. And first I'm going to build a mosaic using a virtual raster. So I select here all the tiles. I don't want them to be stacked, so I uncheck that box. And then I save it to a virtual raster, call it a DM Mosaic. And there it is. I'm going to remove the other tiles, I don't need them anymore. And uh, you see this question mark, that means that we need to set the projection. So here it is in latitude, longitude. Now we need to uh, clip it to approximately our catchment. I use a bounding box shapefile for that. But you can also uh, use zoom in and use the coordinates of the canvas. I'm going to change the project to the projection of uh, the bounding box because there's a projection I want to work with, UTM zone 32 north. And then I can use the export tool to export the DM mosaic to a smaller version. Call it DM clip, and I calculate the boundaries from the bounding box. But uh, I first have to set the uh, projection. So it uses the UTM coordinates, and then I can specify the horizontal and vertical resolution. I'll set it to 30 meters, which is approximately the SRTM uh, one arc second resolution. I specify the no data because there's some uh, resampling taking place because the projection changes and there is the result i remove the mosaic and i also don't need the bounding box anymore and set the projection and there it is and now i want to use this with the pc raster tools so i have to convert it to the pc raster map format which is a gdal supported format so I go to these uh, PC raster scripts and there's convert to PC raster format. It's a bit basic at the moment, but it will serve uh, for this purpose. In the future, I will make it possible to choose different uh, data types that PC raster uh, needs. But now it will just simply create a scalar output. Call it just uh, dem.map. Make sure you choose .map. and set the projection. PC raster doesn't store the projection anyways, but this is just for our own reference. The next step is to calculate the flow direction. In PC raster terminology, that's called the LDD, local drain direction. And we use the LDD create tool for that. Here it is, the input is the DEM. And uh, basically it's the fill, sinks and flow direction in one. And we keep all these parameters as default to fill it completely. And we create the output that we will call flow direction in the PC raster format. In the future also this uh, algorithm will be improved so you can input spatials for those parameters. But now it's just uh, values. We change the projection. The flow direction map in the PC raster format is different than from Saga. It has a different encoding of the compass direction. It uses the directions on your numeric pad on your keyboard. Now this is an input for the flow accumulation that uh, we can calculate with the Accuflux tool uh, where we need the LDD and a material layer but we don't have that yet so let's first create a material layer and here we will use the spatial function to create a map which just has value 1 in the scalar data type which means only one unit of material, unit of rain, will then be 
uh, put on every pixel and we use that to accumulate over the flow direction. So basically we accumulate the numbers of pixels. There we go, it created the material layer, which has just a value of one for each pixel. And now we can use the Aquaflux tool. We choose the flow direction as LDD layer, material, material, and then we save the result to a flow accumulation. And we run the tool, it's quite quick. There it is, and uh, you can imagine that it's quite a, a logarithmic scale of the values with uh, quite some extremes. So we're gonna style it in a proper way. We'll go to the layer styling panel, and here we use single band gray because uh, area law just needs uh, from black to white, where black is low and uh, white is high. So uh, we can use the single band gray. But we need to change the stretching of the colors, and because this is uh, exponential, we can use the cumulative count cut uh, method. And here you see the effect of that. And uh, you can play a bit with the, the figures there to, uh, to get a better result, stretching the colors. You'd also like to have some place reference, therefore we use the geocoding uh, plugin to find a place name here. And this is close to uh, Roermond. So I'm going to look for Roermond, which is in the Netherlands. There it puts the point on the map. And now, if we want it uh, really nicely in area lot, we need to make it uh, white, uh, because then it will really pop out of the scene. So I'm going to make the label white. And as you see, it uh, contains a bit more than the name of the city. So I'm going to edit the attribute table. and change it to Roermond, the name of the city. There it is. Now I want the placement a little bit better. And I think also better to make it a bit bigger. And in bold, so it will really come out of the scene. And now we also need to do something about a purple dot. Let's also make it white. So it will pop out of the scene and remove the stroke and make it a bit bigger. There it is. So it will be quite prominent in the export. So now we can export the result to a nice uh, grayscale PNG file. And we use the export tool. And there we use uh, everything that's in the map canvas uh, extent. And then we save it. And the result can be opened in Arialot. Arialot is a free tool to render these grayscale images into uh, a 3D impression with shading. Uh, it's open source and uh, you can download it with a link that I'll put in the description. Let's open our PNG file that we just created. And uh, you see that it starts uh, rendering it immediately. It takes uh, black as low and white as high. And the blue bar shows how far the rendering is. And you see the result improving and it gets sharper. Now there's a lot of things you can play with. So it's just a matter of playing around to get uh, the right result. Um, you can change the way of visualization and the uh, uh, exaggeration. Put it a bit less here. You see the effect now. And it just, every time you change something, it starts rendering again. You can change the position of the sun, the color of the background. And uh, yeah, just try what's there to make a nice uh, result. And with your mouse, you can rotate the scene and zoom in and out. And then finally, you can uh, save your result with a little camera button on the bottom to uh, a PNG file that you can uh, post somewhere. So enjoy and uh, hope to see some nice creative uh, results. So this works with any grayscale image that you have. Just think about that black is low and white is high. Enjoy.